Thank you all for your time this evening to attend our Traditional Knowledge Innovation Award information session. Uh, my name is Megan Salik. I'm the Engagement Manager at Etsy, and I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and the waters on which I uh, work from today, the Nunawal people, and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge the lands on which our fellows work, live, and apply science, technology, and engineering. We acknowledge traditional knowledge and the deep history of innovation it embodies. So who are we? We are the Australian Academy of Technological Sciences and Engineering. We are an independent non-government organization and a registered charity led by a diverse fellowship of over 900 fellows. Since 1975, the Academy has grown from 65 members to well over 900 who are responding to Australia's most urgent and complex challenges. We're an authoritative and independent voice to government and our world-class STEM career programs demonstrate how to tackle our most urgent challenges. I'll now hand over to our membership manager, Elvira, as she walks us through Etsy's suite of awards. Thank you, Megan. The awards nominations and judging processes are a very detailed and robust process to elect new awardees each year. Each year, ATSI recognises outstanding senior and emerging innovators with national awards. The ATSI awards are a flagship moment for ATSI and the Australian STEM community to celebrate our applied scientists, technologists, engineers and entrepreneurs from diverse fields. Our ATSI awards categories include our Early Career Awards. David and Valerie Solomon Award recognises and celebrates public sector researchers who are engaged with industry and collaborating with industrial researchers to drive collaborative activities producing real-world impact. Our Ezio Rosado Polymer Scholarship acknowledges and celebrates the outstanding achievements and potential impact of a PhD candidate in the field of polymer science or engineering. Our ICM Agri-Food Award acknowledges two early career innovators who have achieved substantial peer or industry recognition in the Australian food sector. Our mid and senior career awards include our Clooney's Ross Technology Innovation Awards, which recognises contributions by dedicated individuals or teams who have shared their vision and knowledge with others to apply technology for the benefit of Australia and beyond. Our Batterham Medal for Engineering Excellence is an early career award for a graduate engineer who has achieved substantial peer or industry recognition for their work in the past five years. And our Traditional Knowledge Innovation Award celebrates STEM research and development by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples or communities, which is based on or significantly incorporates or builds on traditional knowledge. I would now like to introduce Professor Jason Sharples as the Chair of the Traditional Knowledge Innovation Award Committee. Hi everyone, thanks Elvira. Just to uh, acknowledge I'm also here in Ngunnawal country, Ngunnawal and Ambri country down in, in Canberra, and just uh, acknowledge the, the countries and then in my respect to the elders of, of uh, other mobs where people are sort of representing from. So yeah, my name's Jason, um, not Z3007395 as the thing on my Zoom screen would suggest. Um, so I'm a professor at the uh, University of New South Wales um, at the Canberra campus, where I'm director of the Bushfire Research Group. Um, I've been the, well, I was the chair of the uh, award selection committee last year and, and doing that again this year. So last year was kind of the, the first year we, we, we had the award um, for traditional knowledge and innovation. Um, so I guess my, my role as the chair, and I, I forgot to mention I'm also a, a fellow recently elected, was it 2021? I think it was 2021, I was elected a fellow. Yes. So yeah, one, and one of, the, uh, one of the growing number of indigenous fellows in ATSI, I'm a, a, a Bundjalung man. Wallable Bundjalung uh, from up in the Northern Rivers. Um, 
so yeah, the the role I play as the chair is is really just to facilitate the discussions that we have after everyone's made their own sort of individual assessments on, on as part of the selection committee, and to um, you know make sure everything's kept respectful and um, all all the uh, you know, due diligence is, due diligence is given to the, all the different issues around equity and 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 so on. But it's really just to sort of you know preside over the yarn that we have after all the uh, different appraisals have come in and um, working out the uh, the best candidate with the other the other committee members. Thank you, Jason. Nominees for the ATSI Traditional Knowledge Innovation Award may self-nominate or be nominated by an individual proposer. The nomination will need a seconder who is not a part of the nominee's organisation and is not the nominee's collaborator, direct supervisor or manager. They will need to provide a statement or letter, written, audio or video, explaining their detailed knowledge of the work for which the nomination has been made. The seconder should be an industry or technical expert in the nominee's field. The nomination will also need two referees and at least one of whom is Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and who can attest to the community benefit traditional knowledge rights. The proposer, seconder or referees, sorry, the proposer, seconder or referees do not need to be at fellows of ATSI. The nomination will need to include the nominee, proposer, seconder and referee's contact details, the nominee's current main employment role and an executive overview with a maximum of 100 words to provide a brief summary of the traditional knowledge innovation and how its application has or will improve understanding and awareness of traditional knowledge and its modern value. The award selection the award selection criteria can be written answers or audio or video with a maximum of three to five minutes. For audio and video answers, you will need to provide a web-based link to the relevant files. Example, a link to a video or podcast hosting platform. Videos should be interview style with no additional graphics or features. Example, just the nominee speaking. The criteria is now. Criteria one, traditional knowledge innovation with a maximum of 500 words. Describe how the nominee is demonstrating achievement of excellence and impact in any STEM field by incorporating, applying or innovating traditional knowledge to address a contemporary issue, problem or challenge. Please include what is the story of the traditional knowledge and how is this traditional knowledge being woven and shared to address a particular problem or issue? Criteria two, application, sorry, application of the traditional knowledge innovation with a maximum of 300 words. Please describe how the work or innovation has achieved or has a clear and likely path to achieve success in translation from traditional knowledge to contemporary practical application within a STEM field. Please include how is the work associated with the innovation of traditional knowledge being applied or used in a practical way? Also, how is the work improving modern understanding of traditional knowledge and its value? The third criteria is ways of working with a maximum of 200 words. Here you'll explain how the nominee builds meaningful, trusting, respectful and equitable relationships through the process of sharing and weaving traditional knowledge. And also identify how the work or innovation of the nominee is positively impacting and any benefit it has for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and or communities. The proposer statement or if self-nominating the nominee statement should be a maximum of 200 words or two minutes audio or video. And this will support, this should include support of the nomination and provide any additional background regarding why they have put forward the nominee. 
We will also need a statement from the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander individual community or organisation who is nominated attesting to the author's authenticity of the traditional knowledge, including identifying the peoples who are traditional custodians, the right of the individual community or organisation to build on and apply the traditional knowledge, if the work has been done in partnership with a non-Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person, community or organisation, then the respectful collaborative nature of the work. Any actual or anticipated benefits to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and or communities. This may include, but is not limited to, intellectual property, ownership, royalties, commissions, other payments. We also um, have a section where you can um, add supporting documents. This may include up to two additional links or documents to support the overall nomination. An example could be a media coverage or promotional materials or publications. And also describe how this additional material supports your nomination with a maximum of 100 words. Now we move on to the selection process. All the award committee members will individually examine, score and comment on all the nominations received. Then the awards committee will meet by Zoom to discuss the nominees and decide on a short list for due diligence checks. After the due diligence checks are completed, the committee members will individually examine, score and comment on the due diligence. Then the committee will meet by Zoom to discuss the final nominees and decide on the winner. The names and citation of the awardee is provided to the board for approval. We then contact the awardee and prepare for the ATSI Awards Gala Dinner to be held in Melbourne on the 17th of October. On the screen, you will see the key dates for the awards. Nominations will close COB Wednesday, the 15th of May. I would now like to invite you to watch the short video from last year's winner, John Watson and Professor Ronald Quinn. I'm a Yigana man, born in Mount Anderson. Yeah, I'm Anthony Watson, the son of John. We um, created the community of John Mananga. The Majalo is a freshwater mangrove tree that we've used to our tradition and our Dreamtime stories. Um, it's a numbing cream. Yeah, I see my finger. The crocodile came along and took my finger took that little bit there. And um, I had to get Majala to nominate. It. it was put in the newspaper and, and we had Griffith Uni contact us towards wanting to learn about the traditional medicine. And it started our adventure with Griffith Uni. My name is Ron Quinn. I'm a professor emeritus at Griffith University. John and I discussed what we could do with that because we had to show that we could follow it in a laboratory. We was hoping that uh, our traditional uh, medicine get put on a shelf to be used. We know it's 10 times stronger than morphine. We have an aspiration to have this ready for the Olympic Games in Brisbane in 2032. We hope to convince the Therapeutic Goods Administration that thousands of years of oral history from the Aboriginal people that could come forward to benefit all Australians. It also opened up a window for other Indigenous um, medicine usage to actually hit the market, similar to our one. Griffith had their shares back to the community. I'm just really happy that it's starting to move to acknowledge traditional knowledge, and hopefully we can do that for all the well, it's a big surprise, a big surprise to me. It's good to hear that something that all the work that we've done over the years, yeah, was worth it, yeah. Thank you all 
for your attention. We will now open up the Q&A session. Please use the electronic raise hand button on the bottom of your screen in the reactions tab or enter your question in the chat function. Uh, Jason, I have a question. Um, what do you think is the most important part of the application? Well, I guess there's strictly speaking, there's two most important parts. Um, the, the weightings for the different criteria are sort of 40, 40, 20. So 40% for the traditional knowledge and uh, innovation, uh, 40 for the application and uh, sort of you know, demonstrating the uh, sort of utilization of, of the uh, of the of the indigenous knowledge and then 20 percent of the uh, the ways of working which is really about the uh, the relationships that are sort of um, you know the relationships that are that are, that are being um, utilized in in um, you know promoting that indigenous knowledge um, I mean a, a really good application like like the one that won last year really does a good job of addressing all those things um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really about, I guess, I mean, the whole award is really about, you know, acknowledging the, the knowledge that we have in this country and we've had in this country for over you know, millennia and, you know, really showing how that knowledge can be brought to the fore and weave with, you know, Western scientific perspectives and, um, you know, how, how that weaving together can really provide benefit uh, for all Australians. Great, thank you, Jason. I've got a question, but I don't know how to do the hand up. That's, That's okay. okay. Go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Fiona. Thanks for this overview. So I'm one of a team uh, with Walpuri, Maru, Nyapali people, so spanning Northern Territory and Western Australia, I'm a science researcher. And I've got a few questions. Um, one is, we're a really scattered group of people who keep in touch by direct phone calls, telephone, uh, and a little bit Instagram. But And then we meet together. So I'll be catching up, meeting with two Madhu colleagues when we go to a conference next month um in albany um what's the best so i've got two questions but the first one is is there any advantage in the media that we put this together and be it text or video what's what's your preferred we've got heaps of video done but nothing that we've done specifically for this what's your preferred what's the stronger media for the judges Do you want me to do you want me to talk to that? Yes, um, Jason. It's it's a it's a good question because I mean this is the second year we've run it and I think it's the, the first time we've actually allowed um, video entry. So mm -hmm. I I've only looked at written um, submissions before. Um, so I, I'm I'm probably you know as keen as anyone else just to sort of see what these video entries are, are like when they come in. I, I mean I think you know. They can they can be quite powerful, um, and you know particularly when you've got people who aren't necessarily that great at writing, just giving their 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 voice to it directly. I think that can be can be pretty important. But, but we'll see. Okay, is and is it possible to do a mix of video and text? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, there's options for for each question. There's option for written or video or audio. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Does someone want to ask another question, or shall I roll on to the next one? Happy for you to go again, Fiona. So thanks. Look, one of the other <laughs> one of the other questions, which is very tantalising, is is about the prize money. How will the prize money be utilised, and you know what for what? Um, that's really tantalising because we've done all this research with almost no money um, and yet hit international sort of science targets. Um, 
how to answer that when we don't know how much money it is. I mean, the difference between, and I've got no idea of this sort of award space as to whether we're talking about hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars or, or tens or more, which obviously how much money there is influences what we might, how it might be used. What's any guidance there? Um, do you see what I mean? Yes. Um, so currently, uh, last year we had a sponsor, and there was um, there was some prize money um, over a, uh, twenty thousand. Yeah, twenty thousand last year. Yes. Um, we're just in the final stages of confirming um, that sponsor to be on again, um, but we have yet to confirm exactly what that prize money will be for this year. Um, maybe some assumptions around it being similar, um, but we we don't really know to be honest. Um, but when you're submitting, I think speaking to, and I suppose Jason probably can speak to this better than I can, but I think speaking to how you would use any type of money that would come to you, I think would be helpful if, during the application process. Jason, did you have any more to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I guess just to, to say, I think there's a lot more opportunity um, to be had from winning this prize beyond the money as well. I mean, it does, it does give you a, a pretty significant profile. And, yeah, John and, uh, and, and Rod last year, I think, were really, really keen to sort of build on the exposure that it, that it gave them as well. So I think, you know, addressing that, that sort of aspect as, as well is, is, is going to be uh, a good thing to do. And, and just for your knowledge, Fiona, there was um, the traction that our media team got from this award was very significant. It was across Australia, it was international. The amount of calls that we uh, took uh, around getting them to do interviews, it was astronomical and one of the biggest things that we've had in a long time. Mm. On Just on that, so I mean, Borongo and, and Gladys particularly, um, I mean, who are two of the seven uh, Aboriginal collaborators, they, their number one priority is consistently supporting young people to learn up on country and, and culture more. Does that, I mean, it's, which is not commercial development, is that, is that an application that would be seen to be consistent with this award? I guess that's the question. So supporting younger ones, Aboriginal mob, to learn from, them and elders, but also out on country ranges, uh, ranger trips and things like that. Is that yeah? Yeah, I mean, I'm not not sure how much I'm permitted to say here, but um, I, that that would certainly come under the ways of working criteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. And certainly, we've um, you know, that is something that we discuss quite a lot. Mm. I better not say any more. No. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, all good then, Colour. I also had a question if that's okay. Yes. Um, thanks so much for the presentation as well. Um, but I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about the co-applicant um, kind of procedure and how that works. Um, I work for a university organisation. We work really closely with community partners um, and have one in particular in mind for this application, but we just wondered if, um, if you could explain a little bit more about how um, how it works as having a co-applicant um, organisation and whether that, yeah, whether that can be an organisation or needs to be a group of individual people or, um, yeah, if there's any more guidance around that. Um, I'll start and then Jason, you can continue if you like. Um, so, it is open to an individual or a team, a small team. So, um, and it is community or organisation. So an organisation can um, be nominated um, and they, the organisation or the team um, needs to be an Australian Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander person. So at least one of the group of the team needs to be a Australian Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander person. Jason, do you want more elaborate? Um, no, I mean, that, that's that's basically it. I mean, and, you know, 
you know, clearly there's lots of you know exclusively Aboriginal sort of um, organisations out there, you know, different um, mobs that have, you know, different organisations working on their, working on country. I guess they're the sorts of uh, groups that we, you know, sort of most front of mind in this, this sort of uh, exercise. Um, so, you know, for example, the winner from last year was, was an example of such a, such a collaboration where we had a, a university based researcher working with a, a whole community of, of people on country and you know, really, I guess, you know, as, as long as you can sort of demonstrate the, 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 the you know, there's, there's an equitable and, and respectful working relationship between, between the, uh, the different uh, team members. Um, that's kind of what we're, we're looking for. Yeah, that's great. Again, Thank you. In in this case, again, I'm um, struggling with how much I'm allowed to say. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you. In this case, our research organisation, the main applicant, um, is an Aboriginal woman, and the organisation we work with is a um, place-based Yolngu corporation in Galloway, Kuso. That would be, um, yeah, just wanted to sort of figure out who would be the applicant and who would be the co-applicant and um, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, from your guidance, I think we can we can make that work for sure. So the applicant would be the um, Aboriginal person. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, just another question, which follows that one. Oh, sorry, Isabel, did you want to talk? Sorry, no. Um, so Elvira, you mentioned that it was a small team. So we're, we're seven plus uh, some scientists including one cross-cultural scientist. Uh, I'm based in Mbantua on Aranda country. So as I said, we're all in different places in the non-territory in WA. Is seven a team too big? Like you said, a small team. I guess I'm wondering. And what defines that is that like we're drawing an, on and have as co-authors Madhu and Wapri elders, but the seven are those people who've, put knowledge in, done the, the reading and the writing and the, the submitting work. Is seven small enough? I don't want to cut anyone out. That's my trouble. Well, I mean, well, we wouldn't. We couldn't. We wouldn't do it. Um, um, there should be no more than one co-applicant. So no more than one is permitted. Yeah. Um. How do you mean one? So you can't have a, what do you mean? I don't get that. So yeah. the nominee is one person um, and then they need to be the Australian Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander person. Um, and then the group, it should be a small group, a pair or a small group. I would need to find further details for you and get back to you if that's okay on that question. Mm, Jason, great. do you have any uh, thoughts? I mean I, I mean, I guess reading from the eligibility criteria, it says an individual team, community organisation. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I don't see a problem with seven. <laughs> there are I, good... I, think, I think we can accommodate that under the eligibility criteria. Yeah. 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 And the reason why seven is that, you know, the, Holding cultural knowledge is not one individual. It's mm. like yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's why Mardu have and Walpri have said there has to be always more than one. Uh, so yeah, okay. Well, that would be good to find out if you could let me know. Yes, on I will, Fiona. Thanks very much. That's okay. I would also love to know the answer to that question if that's okay. Okay, no Thank problem. You. Thank you again for joining us this evening. Um, if you do have any further questions during the nomination process, please send us an email at membership.atsi.org.au. Um, also, as a reminder, the guidelines are on our website and on in the nominations portal. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the initiative.